KM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of healthcare options. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of HCAM News Live. News Director Tom Nappy here to keep you up to date with all that is happening in Hopkinton. HCAM News Live airs every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. On today's edition of HCAM News, we have the latest Hiller Sports highlights. We'll talk with the Hopkinton Chinese American Association about their Stop Asian Hate rallies. They just had one at the Hopkinton Town Common. And we'll get you up to date with all you need to know as far as happenings in town. But first, the select board voted to change the date of this year's annual town meeting and annual town election. I am happy to report that uh, Mr. Garabidian is here today to give you the specific date for the annual town meeting. And Kona Digan, the town clerk, is here tonight to give you the specific date for the town election. Great, thank you. So I see in the uh, in the description of uh, the agenda item, it looks like the town election will be moved to. I'm sorry, the town meeting will be moved to May 8, and the town election to May 22. Mr. Garabedian and Mr. Deegan, are you both? okay with the uh with the process and the result of those numbers well let, let me address uh the one that comes under my purview which is the town meeting <clears throat> uh the working group did affirm may 8 the only contingency and i assume it's been satisfied at this point was that there would be a uh, sufficient uh sufficiently sized tent available at reasonable cost to be able to accommodate the town meeting on the football field. I can confirm that, yes, this afternoon we were able to, uh, to confirm um, the tent that would be available for us or for the community uh, uh, on, on the day of the annual town meeting. Great. Thank you. Mr. Garabedian, does that satisfy your concern? It does, yes. The, right. the hope, um, the intent, and we will be working toward conducting the meeting in a single day. We have some contingencies that uh, if, if things run long that we can accommodate it uh, either later that weekend or the following weekend. But the, uh, the goal is to try to wrap things up on the 8th, you know, starting relatively early in the morning and uh, going as long as necessary to get all of our business done. Great. So I will request a motion uh, pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 39, Section 10 to delay the annual town meeting currently scheduled to commence on May 3, 2021 at 7 p.m. to commence instead on May 8, uh, 2021 at 0900 hours. So moved. Second. Uh, in the same um, light of discussion, Mr. Deegan, uh, are you um, content with the, and, and are you in approval of moving our town election uh, to Saturday, no, is it? Yeah, we're moving it to uh, Saturday, May 22 of uh, 2021. I, I am content with it. I just want to disclose first to the board that um, that Ms. Ritterbush had brought up this morning that she thought she had heard something about a uh, the graduation parade going on for the high school that day. Uh, so I know I hadn't when I had originally planned this date with school administration, nothing had been said and I hadn't been caught up with, but I did reach out to Evan just in case. And I was told that they do in fact have it scheduled for that day, but I have not seen a parade permit or anything. I, from what I've heard, nothing has been granted or applied for yet. Uh, so I would just, I'm caution that if we go for that day, then we should talk to the school department about moving the parade date. Um, or we should consider a different election day. It's going to be the same thing. So we're going to be voting at the middle school. Correct. It'll be at the middle school Brown gymnasium from 7 a.m. until 8 p.m. 
yeah so we can we can take a look if, if they do put a parade permit in for for that day uh they can work out of the high school and and there's no reason why we can't have uh simultaneous that, voting. that sounds good to me as long as we don't have an issue of like roads closing and people not being able to get to the polls then i'm perfectly satisfied with that uh, so if the roads close if the parade is is similar to the one that was last year the roads are closed for an hour yeah and there's a, a 12 hour right around a 12 hour window to vote people should be able to get there and i'm sure that we're going to do some of that mail-in voting as well so i would imagine that uh that that's going to be uh it's going to be relatively light so yeah i'll use this as a chance to also just point out that actually because of the rules that are allowing us to move this election date it's also been extended for municipal elections to have mail-in voting as well so i'll be able to help vo voters get their votes in ahead of time for that as well all right great will, the, will this change the voter registration dates the, correct they... um so usually it's 20 days prior once you move an election date uh with the special law then it moves to 10 days prior so because we'd be moving it to the 22nd it would then go to the 12th so uh, voter registration deadline would be would be wednesday may 12. so there you have it this year's annual town meeting will take place on Saturday, May 8th at 9 a.m. at the Hopkinton High School Fields. And the town election will take place on Saturday, May 22nd at Hopkinton Middle School. We'll have more details posted soon on our website, hcam.tv. The Hopkinton Chinese American Association talked with us on our Hopkinton Hangout Hour program about their recent Hopkinton Stop Asian Hate Rally. Here's a look. This past week, members of the Hopkinton Chinese American Association joined us on the Hangout Hour to speak about this past weekend's Stop Asian Hate Rally in Hopkinton. HCAA President Sherry Zhang talked about the organization. So the HCAA uh, is a non-profit organization. A few of us, you know, we started um, organizing Chinese New Year celebration gala every year. And uh, later on, based on that, we formed the, uh, the organization. So in the past, the biggest events that we held is the annual Chinese New Year celebration around spring festival time. I am not sure if you have uh, been to one, but if not, next year we would like to invite you there. Um, and this year we uh, we have to move it online, of course. So it was a very different uh, experience. Um, yeah. And uh, also we have organized a few donations to local communities, like the library, the uh, project just because the school. And you know, last year um, we uh, organized a mask and personal. Uh, protection equipment to the towns, um, you know, the senior center, the police department, the fire department, all of that. So uh, we are pretty much a, a charity uh, organization. Member of the HCAA and HCAM volunteer, Ziki Liu, highlighted the day with a video. Here's a look.
HCAA President Sherry Zhang spoke about the rally in Hopkinton. Yeah, thank you again for uh, taking the video. I saw you that day, you know, running around, taking pictures and videos. It's a lot of work. Uh, so, uh, and the video is very well edited. Uh, and now I want, and now I know where you got your training from. Very well done. <laughs> so, you know, when the, the news reached us, uh, for me personally, I was very emotional and I was just simply appalled to learn such news and we talk about it uh, among a few members of uh, our organization, and we uh, we knew we need to do something about it. So we called the town and uh, talking about a you know uh, a, a small assembly, about and the eight. town is very uh, supportive. We set on a date and a time, uh, and that's you know Saturday, and then we started to spread the words around. So here I would like to thank the Hopkinton Freedom Team and the South Asian Circle of Hopkinton. Uh, we reached out to them and they helped us uh, spread out the words and they are very, very supportive. Um, so, uh, and then we uh, also, you know, spread, uh, spread the words around the uh, Asian community in the nearby towns. And um, we did not actually expect so many people to turn up, uh, but the turnout was much, much bigger than what we expected. Uh, feel very supportive and uh, you know as a community member uh, that feels uh, that makes me feel very good watch the whole conversation at our website hcam.tv a whole lot more coming up on hcam news stay tuned HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Phipps Insurance Agency, representing companies such as Mapfree Insurance. Their family-owned independent agency is deeply rooted in the communities they serve and offer time-tested insurance products to fit individual needs. Since 1950, Phipps Insurance specializes in home, auto, business, condo, and renter's insurance. You know, Dick and Rick Hoyt in the town of Hopkinton had a, a real and heartfelt connection uh, that started years and years ago and it's uh, persisted right to this this very moment um, and to have the sculpture uh, in front of center school which honors team Hoyt uh, is, is going to be even more memorable now uh, with the passing of Dick to me besides the athletic accomplishments of Dick Hoyt the most powerful example that they set forth is the, the strong and, and, and bonding relationship between our father and son. That's really what unconditional love is all about. Welcome back to HCAM News Live. Hiller's football recently opened up their season. We have the freshman and JV games live on the HCAM channels. Here's a look at what happened along with Hiller girls volleyball and swimming. Hopkinton Hillers freshman football took on Holliston this past Friday. It was a good defensive battle. Holliston found the end zone in the first quarter. You're going to line it up once again out of the gun. Sahagian in the backfield. Motion from right to left. Takes the snap. Sahagian up the middle. Here he goes. Breaking tackles. Cuts to the near side. Into the end zone. Touchdown Holliston Panthers. A 25-yard touchdown run by the freshman Kevin Sahagian. The Holliston touchdown would be the only score in the game as both teams continuously made big stops and put up a great defensive effort to end the game in a 6-0 final. Hiller's varsity also played Holliston on the road the following day and lost a close game 37 to 27. You can view the varsity game through our friends at HCAT Television, Holliston Community Access. The JV team hosted Holliston this past Monday and the game started off with a bang. As it's going to be a low kickoff that'll sail along the ground. Seamus Murphy will return it, and he's going to have a very good return. There he goes across midfield to the 20, the 10, and right into the end zone. How about that? An opening kickoff return for a touchdown for the Hopkinton Hillers, and just like that, we have a 6-0 game. 
A huge opening kickoff return from Seamus Murphy puts the Hillers up 6 to nothing, and that's how the score stayed following the conversion attempt. Holliston with the ball at their own 20 in the second quarter, and this happens. 30. Kylie out of the gun. Takes the snap. Looks up field under pressure, and he's brought down. Another Hiller sack. Teaming up was Riley Finnegan and Devin Canty to bring down Kylie to reserve clock to maybe get another opportunity at another drive. And it was that last time because it is fourth down here. Snap and it is going to go over the head of the punter into the end zone. And that is going to be a safety. A safety puts the Hillers up eight to nothing. In the third quarter, both teams went back and forth with some great defensive stops. The game stayed an eight to nothing lead in favor of the Hillers heading into the fourth. In the fourth quarter, Holliston found the end zone. Marked at the Hillers three yard line. Kylie gonna line it up out of the pistol. Olsen in the backfield, he'll fake the handoff, throws to his left, has a wide open target, and it's hauled in for a touchdown. What a great play there by Holliston. Some good trickery by Kylie. A three-yard reception to Holliston's Colin Kerr from quarterback TJ Kylie makes it an 8-6 to six game. Holliston attempted a two-point conversion to tie the game. Kylie line it up out of the gun, takes the snap. He'll hand it off, run up the middle, pushing his way forward is Harding, but he is going to be stopped short. The conversion was no good. Towards the end of the fourth quarter, however, Holliston driving at their own 48. But all of a sudden, their last drive was able to find the end zone. Let's see if they can keep the momentum going. Kylie out of the gun. He'll hand it off. And no, he fakes it. Play action. Throws up the middle, and it's intercepted. Picking it off is Braden Hicks. It went off the hands of his target, and Hicks is there to collect. And he will take it into Holliston territory all the way to the 40. Hopkinton's Braden Hicks with the interception. But Holliston would get the ball back. Lisher out of the pistol, Leblin in the backfield, play action, rolls to his left, throws up field, and it's intercepted. And that is just what Holliston needed there. He tries to throw up the middle and jumping up and picking it off was Miguel de Jesus. Miguel de Jesus picks off the pass, and Holliston had one last opportunity. Kylie out of the gun, takes the snap, hands it off once again, and this time they're ready for him. Harding is going to be stopped for a loss. Backfield takes the snap, and he is in trouble. Went play action, but did not fool the defense, and he's brought down for a loss. Robert Lisher leading the way on the sack. Allison, they need to convert here. Fourth and ten. Kylie takes the snap, rolls to his right, in trouble, throws up the middle, no one's there. A turnover on downs. The Hopkinton defense gets the job done and takes the game in the JV battle, 8-6. Also this past Monday, Hopkinton swimming and dive hit the pool at Milford High School to post results for their meet versus Ashland. Here's a look. Oh, gosh. Good job. Great job. It's just a little scary sometimes. <laughs> uh, you parents have nerves of steel. Uh. Alyssa. Now, Alyssa is uh, swimming for Wheaton next year, and she really enjoyed uh, last April, March and April, speaking with the coach during COVID. That's when she really got to know the coach of Wheaton, and that really helped her make her decision. Beautiful nice. swim by both yeah. Alyssa and Kevin. The result of the meet is to be determined, but good results by the Hillers. 
This past Tuesday, Hiller Girls Volleyball took on Medfield. Steve Sweetapple had the call. Well, Rhett with a bullet. Oh. <laughs> nice. Gardner tried to duck to let that one go long, but she couldn't get out of the way because the ball was coming so fast. End it, take a break, start all over. Hannah, oh. Millie puts that one deep. Good get from Rachel. Bump set outside, Bub goes deep. Sam. Gets that one to Rachel, right in the middle for Millie. Just tips it, and that's it. In the first set, Medfield went on a big run towards the end, but the Hillers would hang on to take the set 25 to 20. In the second set, the Hillers came through big. McCarran handles that, Rachel, Powers. Nice play from Kate. Side out, Hillers. Set point. Sam, Rachel in the middle, Michaela. Nice. Nice swing from Grady. And that's the second set. Hopkinton takes the set 25 to 14. In the third set, Medfield did all they could to keep the match going. Right on the back line. Wagon seller with a good kill. Great course cross court hit. Kate gets us back underway. It just drops that one over. Beautiful. Whatever it was. And of course, every year we still can't hear it from the stands. Oh, great block. Medfield gets to it. They've got a free ball. Let's see what they do. Kate, Catherine, Millie down the middle. Well done. Sam, Rachel, back set. Dion, that's it. But the Hillers were just too much and took the set 25 to 20 and improved to three wins and one loss on the season. Recently in town, a COVID-19 vaccine clinic was hosted at the Hopkinton Senior Center. State Representative Carolyn Dykema, along with a few others were in attendance to tell us all about it. So we've been very fortunate the last couple days. We've had the health department put together having a COVID clinic for those 75 and older. And so the, what you have here is the last day of the clinic. And we're really excited to have had it here. We will have their follow-up clinic. At this point, we don't know of any future clinics here in Hopkinton. But right now, at least we've been able to get part of the population. And we're really excited about that. First, you're greeted at the door by the chief. And then we sanitize your hands and we'll give you a new mask. And then we'll have you check in where we hand you a consent. We take a picture of your insurance card and then move you over to the vaccination zone. We have six different vaccinators that will vaccinate you, go through all of your medical history to make sure that the vaccine is not contraindicated. And then you will go to the recovery zone either for 15 minutes if you don't have a history of allergies, 30 minutes if you do. And then after that, we have you check out um, and we'll schedule your next appointment. It's really easy. So if you miss today's clinic and you are unable to make your vaccine appointment, you can still visit the mass.gov website. Use the map to find a location that will work for you. There's also the state 211 that is able to assist senior citizens with booking their appointments. The senior center here also has um, helped us with booking any appointments for our clinics that are local. I'm here today because I, I could, you know, I had to come out and see this happening. This is getting vet people vaccinated in Massachusetts and in fact across the country is really the, the first order of business for anyone in government right now. Um, we talk about it all the time and just being able to be out here to actually see it in action is not only really important from a public policy perspective to make sure that, you know, the processes we have in place are working, but it's also just such an incredibly hopeful experience. I mean, just seeing so many of our residents being able to come in and get vaccinated, which is so important to public health um, and to people's mental health, honestly. Uh, it's just a really important thing. And I just wanna say thanks to, of course, all the people putting this together, the Hopkinton Public Health Department, the town of Hopkinton, all the public safety, police and fire, 
who are out here today um, volunteering and putting their time in to actually put shots in arms. This is really what it's going to take to get us, um, you know, get our economy back up and running, get people out into the community again, what we're all looking forward to. And this is really where the rubber meets the road. And uh, just incredibly impressive to see the level of effort, the level of organization and expertise that's going on here. So uh, leave it to Hopkinton to, to get the job done. So other than being the location, we have been helping people sign up and we can continue to help people sign up. So if you do want to get um, a vaccine someplace else, uh, one of the mass sites, you can give us a call. We're going to be very happy to help you sign up. Um, we did a lot of signing up. We've done a lot of talking to people and helping them through it. Um, and I will say, because you may have to go to, to the Massachusetts mass sites like Gillette or um, I guess there's one in Natick, they are run very smoothly um, and they are people I'm hearing wonderful stories about people who've gone there they've had great um, it's been a very smooth process and they're in and out so it's not this big scary I'm going to be in line with millions of other people it's not like going to Disneyland I'm told it's a much more calm uh, very focused process but that it's easy to go through good afternoon Mike the fire department's here today assisting the Board of Health with the delivery of their vaccination clinic. I'm uh, very happy to have five paramedics that are doing the vaccines and others that are assisting with the paperwork, checking in and checking out of people and the day's going real good. You know, I can tell that the uh, local people in the uh, area are enjoying coming to a facility that they know and seeing faces that they know when they're getting vaccinated and uh, it makes a difference seeing that and that makes us feel good. What is the police department's role at today's clinic? We'll help in any way that we can, but I'm just visiting today. It's really Officer Powers and McGaffigan that are doing everything today. Uh, wherever they're needed, they'll fill the void. So um, word, word to the district and, and uh, to all the folks out there, you know, waiting and wondering when they're gonna be able to get vaccinated, I would first of all ask for your patience. This is a monumental effort. Um, as you can see, so many um, important uh, structures that need to be set up to get this done. Uh, there is some good news. Thursday, February 18th, age 65 and over, older residents will be able to get vaccinated. I know that's something people, it's really important to them. Um, we know that we're, so many other folks need to get vaccinated and we're moving the process as fast as we can and we wanna make sure to get those doses of vaccine out to the population um, in a really efficient and quick fashion. So stay tuned, more good news to come um, and be safe out there. And recently, a marathon legend passed away, Dick Hoyt. And Dick Hoyt was, of course, known for pushing his son, Rick Hoyt, throughout many Boston marathons, as well as other races throughout the country. And we hope that Dick Hoyt is resting in peace. He will certainly be missed around the community. Upcoming town government meetings to tell you about on Monday, March 29th at 7 p.m. on HCAM TV. We'll have the planning board meeting on Thursday, April 1st at 7 p.m. on HCAM Ed. We'll have the school committee meeting. You can see all the town government meeting information at HopkintonMA.gov. Believe it or not, we are out of time for this edition of HCAM News Live. Don't worry, next Thursday at 6.30 p.m., we will be back. As always, thanks for tuning in. Take care, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll talk to you again soon.